Hey, what's up? Jason here from Unity3D.College. In this video, I'm going to give you a brief overview of Timeline, show you how to use it, and how to create a simple but interesting little scenario like the one I have here. So if you watch here, you'll see that the camera moves along. We start off out here, we zoom in, close in the view, then pop behind the guy. We'll jump over to the barrels view in a second, brush it, let him walk away, and change the camera. So that's what we're going to set up now. And to do this, what I want to do is just delete the existing stuff and just start from scratch so you can see the entire process. Although I think actually what I'll do is just disable it. So the first thing I need is a director for my timeline. So just create an empty game object and I'm just going to name this uh, director to just give it any name. And I like to reset the transform position. Now I want to create a timeline. So I have the timeline window open. I just hit create it'll automatically name it off of my director's name and I'll just put this in my root folder for now and hit save so you see here we have our first little track and we don't need to worry about that what we want to do is add a new track so I'm, the first thing I want to add is a Cinemachine timeline track now this has a field here for us to assign the camera that we want to bind this to so all the time these are binding fields and we need to just pick an object to bind. So I already have a camera. I'm just going to drag my camera out of that old director and then I'll assign the camera here. I'm only dragging it out because that other director is disabled. It doesn't really matter what it's a child of. Now I want to use virtual cameras to position this Cinemachine camera. So what I do is right click in here and hit add Cinemachine shot clip and then I can choose from one of my previously created virtual cameras. And these are just standard Cinemachine virtual cameras set up in different locations with different settings. Some of them look at the night guy there, the paladin. Some of them just look at the ground. So let's start with, uh, let's go back to our director. And then let's drag in the ground one for our first shot. Oh, actually, I need to select the shot here. And then drag ground right over to the virtual camera. Now, the second shot I have is a close-up of the night. So I'm going to add another Cinemachine shot clip. And then add the night close-up. And then I'm going to shrink this ground shot down just a bit and drag the night one over it so that it'll blend. So now if I drag the line forward, you'll see that um, we actually get a little bit of a blend there. It goes right up there, but our night's not visible. Let's pull all of these objects out of here too. So these are just the props that we're toggling on and off. And go back to the director one more time. And then we'll just watch and you should see it fly in right on the character. And you also notice that we're getting that vignette effect really strong here. The reason for that is on my close-up, I have a Cinemachine post effect. So if you have the post processing stack enabled, it's an asset pack, grab it, put it in. This is part of it. And what you can do is set up a separate profile for the uh, virtual camera and it'll swap and blend between the two. Now, you also need to go to your primary camera and make sure that you have that Cinemachine post effects and the post-processing behavior. What will happen is it'll just use the one right here most of the time whenever you don't have something overriding it on a virtual camera. All right, let's jump back over to the director one more time. And I'm gonna add just one more shot, keep this simple. So I added one more shot, and this time I'm not gonna blend it. And I'm gonna go with the knight over the shoulder clip. Just like that. So now you see as I drag it along, it'll go right there. Eventually it'll make that hard snap. Okay, the next thing we want to do is animate the Paladin character because he's walking forward and then slashing. First he stands idle, walks forward, and then slashes. So to do that, I just drag the Paladin down here. And I have the option to create any of these types of tracks. And I want an animation track. I could have also right-clicked, hit animation track, and then dragged the Paladin onto it. Either way works. I already did it the short way, though, so we'll go with that. Now, once we have this guy selected or this track added, we can right click and add an animation from clip. And I'm gonna start with an idle animation. I think this is the right one. Then I'll add one more animation. Let's add a walk. So I have this walk forward. And then I'll, let's see, let's blend these two a little bit. And then I wanna expand out my walk forward. Actually, I think I wanna shorten this idle. And let's, let's go more like that. So he's only idle for a little while and then he starts walking. So if I hit play here, I can actually preview this. You see, there he goes. He's walking, but you may have noticed something strange that he started walking into a building, which is a little bit weird. So let's try one more time. But look at his position. Right now, he is not where he's supposed to be. If I click off of the timeline, you see, I have him placed over here. 
But as soon as we go into the director and show the timeline, he gets reset to 000. Now to fix that, what we need to do is select this track and hit apply track offsets. And then there's a little move tool, I can click on it, and then I can put him into position. This is just because the playables are saved in the project, not the scene. They don't know anything about locations. Think of them a lot like prefabs. This whole timeline is a lot like a prefab, and then you're binding it to scene objects here. So it's not gonna have world positions, it's only going to have local positions. So now if I run it, you see he starts from this position and he just kind of walks along. And it looks like he's almost to the barrel. That was some perfect layout there. Now the next thing I wanna do is just, I'm gonna add one more clip. Let's go with the slash. So let's add the slash clip right there at the end and give it a little bit of a blend. And I also wanna right click on this and hit this match offsets to previous clip, just barely on the screen right there. That'll keep it from resetting him back to his start point at the beginning of this animation. So this should make him just play right through. He'll walk up, he'll swing, and we're done, right? Let's see, there he goes. Bam, okay, so he did the swing. Uh, you can't really see it there because I didn't move the camera transitions, but don't worry about it. You saw it in the scene view, I'm sure. So next I wanna add the switch for the barrel. So I said that the barrel is exploding when we hit it. The way we do that is by switching from a full barrel that's just one piece down to this broken barrel that's a bunch of pieces, each with a rigid body. It just kind of breaks apart just from enabling it. So to do that, I'll go back to my director and I want to right click and add an activation track. Now I'll assign the object that I want. So first I want to start with the barrel. The normal barrel stays active basically until I hit it. So right around here. Then I want to right click and add another activation track. And here I want to add the broken barrel. So let's pop that in. And I'll just make this line up um, you know, right at the end. So after I break it, this thing turns active. And it's active until whenever this ends. And the last thing I want to add, another activation clip for the particle system. So again, just drag the particle system down there to bind it. And pop that over here. I can zoom in and out with the mouse wheel. And we're just whatever it doesn't need to be active too long it's just a couple seconds in fact we can see how long it is just by clicking the little where is it it's this here right the gear switching it over to seconds so now we can see it in seconds instead of frames which i like better um i think we're just about done the last thing i want to add is an audio clip so here i'm just going to create an empty audio source a game object with an audio source on it and let's just call this audio source um, I'll assign it to one of my mixers here. Let's go output and choose a mixer. I don't think you need to, but I already had it set up like that. So let's do it. And then let's go back over to the director and the timeline. And I'm just going to drag my audio source down here and choose audio track. Oh, it's kind of off screen. I don't like that. Let's right click and hit add audio track, assign the audio source. And then I can right click in here again and ooh. Let's drag this up a little bit. Right click here and hit add audio, Add from audio clip. Now I wanna add the wood impact one, drag it out here and it should just kind of play. Actually, I kind of wanna line this up so that the sound is right when the objects become active. See the, the big part of the sound where there's actually a noise. All right, so now if I hit play and everything goes good here, I'm gonna expand out this camera view just a little bit. If everything goes good, you should walk up, slash the thing, break it apart. All right, see the transitions happening. He's walking forward. We're about to make that switch. And done. Now, right after this, if I let it keep going, things are just going to reset because the timeline ended. Normally, we'd want to move this away, transition away, and do some cleanup probably. But I think this is a good, simple example of how you can set things up. Just remember that everything in the left here, these are tracks, and you're just binding them to scene objects. So remember that your playable exists outside of the scene. You're just binding it up. You'll need to worry about offsets a little bit, but it's pretty simple to deal with. And you can do some really, really cool stuff. The blending is awesome. You can also customize this stuff, write your own scripts for it. I'll do a video on that later. It's a little bit more in depth. Um, but I, I think this is awesome. I'm really excited for Timeline. I can think of dozens of awesome uses for it. So hopefully you're as excited as I am. If you are, don't forget to like the video, thumbs up, uh, subscribe, and thanks for watching.